Now, there are many things that he has said. And he said, we are not going to abandon them. To be cooperative, we need to work together on this. We owe it to the people to know what the plan is, where the money is going to be spent, and we need to the auditing for the dollars that we have already sent over there. These are not tough, tough questions, right? He said, one thing that ha House Republicans are resolved on is that we must stand with our most important ally in the Middle East, and that is Israel, which I agree with. Now, whatever happens next will depend on how successful, how successful Israel is in this awful situation. And Johnson foresees drafting Americans to be sent over to Israel, a position that seems to also be supported by many. Do you support this? I'm like this, I'm on the fence about it. But then again, we had a draft once before. So he said, we certainly hope that it does not come to boots on the ground. If it does come to that, and we've communicated this to the White House staff today, that we have the Article I power in the legislative branch of government, and they have Article II. They have very limited authority on what they can do to respond without coming to Congress to seek consent. And even my colleagues, the committees and jurisdiction understand this and the Foreign Affairs Committee. He goes on to say that should Iran get involved, which it has promised to do, then he believes that the Middle East will soon see a full-on war with Israel at the center of it. Now, if Israel's existence is put into jeopardy, I don't think there is anything that the Prime Minister of Israel would not do to preserve and protect his country from people who have committed to destroying their lives. They have an existential threat every single day. And America will back up Israel. The reason that we are able to sustain ourselves and to survive is because everyone knows that our big ally is America. And that's coming from Prime Minister. The House is back in business and we are going to stand with Israel. Yes, we are. So what are your thoughts here's another question have you or any of your family members or friends been directly affected by the original draft member with uh, Vietnam I am my my uncle Tony was drafted and he went to the army uh, he fought in Vietnam so you know, I have an entire line of family members that are military. My grandfather included. He was in the army and he uh, fought in World War II. So, you know, uh, I think that if it was enacted again, do you think that they would put restrictions on who, what, where, when? Uh, Will they still take into account, well, this man or this woman is married with X amount of children? Do they still take into account the only son role, you know, to carry on the family name? Do they, you know, what do they, what did they take into account back then? Because remember, I was not alive during that time in Vietnam. And would it be even more strict or more lenient this time? These are just questions that I think are rational. I think they're logical. 
and I think that these are questions that are going to enter everyone's mind if this were to get enacted. I hope I'm wrong. I hope that we do not need to have a draft. Do I know about uh, our, our military and their positions right now? Yes, I sure in hell do. Um, quite a few of my, my son's friends, they've already gotten the call. Get ready. Uh, they were uh, a few of the uh, 2,000 Marines that have already been called up to go over. Get ready. That's what they told them. Get ready. Okay. So my son is like this because, you know, these are his buddies, you know, boot camp buddies and all. He was with them at 29 Palms. He was with them at Camp Lejeune. He, you know, he was with them when he was in Kentucky. He was, you know, so these are just things that are, you know, on his mind. They're on my mind as well, as I'm sure that all military families are thinking about. I know that I have other Marine moms here in this community that I, I, I know what you're going through. I know what's going on in your head because even though my son was uh, medically discharged from the Marines, that's not going to stop them from calling him back up. It's not going to stop them, especially if uh, this goes a lot farther like I think it's going to. Um, but what is scary is, like I said, are they going to take into consideration, well, he's married. He's got two children and another one on the way. That's why I was asking anyone who was affected by the draft uh, from the original draft from uh, Vietnam, if, if this is you know going to be more strict or more lenient when it comes to this time around. Also, uh, women are going to be drafted as well, which we're no different than men. You know, we voluntarily serve in the military. So what is the difference between us being drafted and a man being drafted? There is no difference. If we can voluntarily serve, then we can sure as hell be drafted. You know, um, but I think that they should take more, and this is gonna sound strange coming from me, I think that they should take more things into consideration when drafting women. Uh, because certainly we can't have uh, single moms, okay, which I'm sure there are single moms who are voluntarily in the military. I think a draft is much different, um, you know, because especially if that mom has, that single mom has no other family backing, no one to take care of her children. They can't put the kids in foster care. You know, these are the things that I'm thinking. Um, you know, what are going to be the restrictions, the leniency, the, the overall, what is it going to be? Now, do I think that, you know, we, the women should get, uh, you know, oh, no, 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 it's okay, no, no, don't worry. No, I'm not saying that. But are they going to take certain things into consideration? You know, uh, we have a lot of fatherless homes, you know, uh, we don't need mother and fatherless homes, you know, uh, especially when it comes to something like this. Um, but this is just my way of thinking, you know, and will they be calling back the medically discharged? You know, maybe does it depend on how bad the medical was? I don't know. You know, I'm only speaking for my son, you know. Um, so I think that these are questions that should be answered uh, and questions that also should be well thought out before enacting anything. But that's just my opinion. All right, guys, I'm out of here. I will see you in the next one, okay? You stay safe, you stay positive, you keep prepping, and as always, fear less. Ciao.